Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Europe. I hope everybody is having a fantastic weekend so far, staying productive, staying healthy. Hi, Marjona. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Andri, our newest member. Hi, Jainil. Welcome, everyone. Students, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you improve your speaking, your communication, and increase your band scores. Our academic IELTS website looks like this with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join us there. And for the general IELTS, it's the green background at gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button to join there. If you have any questions, send me an email at adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly answer your inquiries. And uh, our schedule for next week is also up on our YouTube community board later today. Um, there will be no classes on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and we have classes from Wednesday all the way uh, to Saturday. So look forward to that. Uh, right now we have speaking part three. And speaking part three continues from the part two cue card. Now the part two cue card, we just finished this class 30 minutes ago, uh, was asking the candidate to talk about a person who is usually positive and what you can learn from this person and um, how that will help you in the future. So uh, our members did a fantastic job of understanding that card, thinking about some strategy, some possible answers, and then coming up with a good response. Now, um, the way part three works, and this is very important, is that part three is connected to part two. That means that you, as the speaker, should find connections between your part three and part two answers. In fact, the examiners these days for the IELTS will usually ask a question or two uh, it, about your response or um, in connection to your response to part two. Okay, so to warm up for this speaking class, let's go through the answer together again that we came up with in the last class for part two. And then I will ask you to come up with a couple of questions for this part two response before we practice our part three questions together. Okay, Arda says, yes, I was watching. That's great, Arda. So this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat. I want to visualize that all of you at home or wherever you are right now looking uh, and watching this class, uh, you're speaking, you're not just listening to me. Okay. All right. So here we go. Uh, members do this again. It's a great chance to practice a second time. So again, talk about a person who is usually positive. Here we go, everyone from the top. Repeat after me. So my gym coach, Victor, is the definition of a constantly optimistic individual who I have known for the past three years. He's six feet tall, roughly 190 pounds, well-built with broad shoulders, a pointy nose, and a chiseled jawline, short brown hair, and usually an ear-to-ear -ear smile. He is a very inspired physical fitness teacher. I met him in high school, and he has also been my football coach over the past couple of years. Anytime I see him, he is just bright and happy and full of energy. The reason I think he is a very cheerful person is because he always finds the bright side of life, even when the situation is challenging. Back in early 2020, the gym where he works had a shortage of money, and instead of getting depressed about it 
and closing up shop, he stayed positive and started a very successful Facebook fundraiser, which eventually solved this financial crisis. He is never disappointed when his football team loses a match. Rather, he always has some motivational words to encourage the team to get up and keep moving forward. In fact, he was in a bad car accident a few years back, and instead of licking his wounds, he picked himself back up, got better quickly, and got back to what he loves doing, which is helping others be fit and enjoy sports. Definitely, I can learn from Victor that physical fitness is an integral part of being an optimistic person, and being an optimistic person is key to success in life. This wisdom will also help me to be happy and feel satisfied no matter what curveballs life throws at me. All right, so now the examiner will say, Adrian, your time is up. Uh, I will stop you there, put the cue card, the note paper, the pencil to the side, and I'm going to continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you a question or two in relation to your part two response, and I will ask you some questions connected to the topic of part two. So one of the reasons the examiners ask you a question or two about your part two answer is because they want to make sure that you're not just memorizing uh, a little speech for certain topics and they also want you to show they want you to show that you can express yourself in a detailed conversation okay so what could be a question that the examiner might ask you after you finish uh, this response what do you think and usually they will write down you'll see them kind of writing um, during your uh, part two responses because they're listening to you and meanwhile while you're speaking uh, they are coming up with uh, one or two questions connected to your um, your speech so connected to what you are telling them so if you told them about this gym teacher Victor what do you think um, might be a question that the examiner might ask you okay so Abhishek says, uh, what are the tips he gave you to boost your attitude to be positive? Okay, um, sure. Um, Juan Pablo says, does his positive attitude influence you? I don't think they would ask that, um, Juan, because uh, that's in the end here. So I can uh, definitely, I can learn from Victor that physical fitness. So you already answered that question, Juan, at the end. Okay. Uh, Medina says, where is he now? That's possible, Medina. So what is this coach doing right now, especially during COVID when people aren't allowed in groups? Yeah, that's positive. Yeah, and that's possible. All right. Uh, Ferdov says, for whom can he be a role model? That's a good question too. Uh, Kashir is just asking a good question. Do you think Victor has always been uh, this positive and optimistic? So do you think that uh, Victor has always, I'm going to go with the European spelling on that, Victor. Do you think that Victor has always been this positive and optimistic? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that could definitely be a question that your examiner writes down. Okay, um, so give me an answer for that. So the examiner might say, okay, that's the end of part two. Now I'll ask you a few questions in connection to your response and some questions related to the topic uh, for part three. Uh, do you think that Victor has always been this positive and optimistic? Okay, so give me an answer. What do you think could be a good answer for that? All right, there's no right answer, there's no wrong answer. You definitely want to show some fluency, okay? All right? Give me a nice answer to this question, okay? I'll write an answer and then let's see if yours matches with mine. So, well,
Okay, that's what I would answer. Uh, let's see what you've come up with. So I see a, quite a few answers there. That's great. Okay, uh, Juan says, probably, but I know he comes from a good family. Both parents are very nice. So I think he's always uh, being influenced by positive vibes. Juan, that's good. Uh, Chabi says, since I've known Victor, he's been very optimistic. So I would suggest that was probably the case before I met him. I believe that a person gains optimism from birth. Good, Chabi, why not, right? There's no right or wrong answer here. It's up to your opinion. It's just good to be expressive and fluent. And Juan and Chabi, both of you have done that. Ola says, I think so, because if a person is positive in their job environment, he will be positive at home and everywhere. Okay. Oh, it's, it's not bad. It's a little bit short. And careful too, Ola, because uh, this is asking about time, like in the past, right? Um, you're talking more about context, so where the person is positive instead of when the person is positive. So really pay attention to the questions, okay? This question is for time. So has Victor always been this positive? Okay, Rafa says, I think so. I just met him a few years ago, um, but uh, even his family is just full of... Uh, positive vibes. Okay, Rafa, I think you missed some of our, the beginning of the class. Otherwise, you would have given a different answer. Okay. Mahmoud says, everyone has ups and downs in their life. Um, so I don't think that Victor is always an optimistic person, but in the gym, he's definitely positive and cheerful. Yeah, Mahmoud, good. Uh, so uh, all people have ups and downs in their life. Careful with the her. Okay, that's a mistake. Uh, the idea is good. Just don't make mistakes with pronouns and with the grammar. Okay, careful with that. All right. Okay, Odil Khan says, Rain or shine, when I see him, he is always a positive man, but I can't see him all the time in his life. Uh, so it's complicated to give a, an honest opinion about this. Perhaps I will ask him the next time I see him, right, Odil Khan? Okay, Odil Khan, it's okay to use idioms, but careful to avoid mistakes with idioms. Complicated to breathe a word about it. Mm, different. Odil Khan, um, the idiom to breathe a word about it is used in situations where information is confidential. So um, my uh, brother um, proposed uh, to his girlfriend, but he asked me not to breathe a word about it to the rest of the family. That would be the context that we use this idiom, breathe a word about it, not in this situation, okay? So we use that idiom in context where it's confidential or secret information, Odell Khan. Good try practicing in these live classes. Students never use idioms in the official IELTS exam that you are not a thousand percent sure make sense in the context. Otherwise, you will lose marks because they're very confusing. So be careful. Okay. All right. Shavnal says, um, judging from the kind person that he has been for the past six years that I've known him, I feel like uh, he has definitely been a positive and optimistic person in the past. Uh, Shavnal, I'm not too sure how kindness um, can relates that much to being positive. Some people can actually be very sad people and still be quite kind. So careful with that. I guess I get it, but it's a loose relationship. So make sure that the information is always very clear. Van Nguyen says, no, in fact, he shared his past experience um, about struggling with depression. Um, he has gone a long way to, in, uh, to achieve this positive outlook in life. He started to look on the uh, brighter side of life through his fitness journey. Van Nguyen, I love that answer. It's very clever, okay? So you answered with a no and explained that he was a depressed and sad person and that he found his positive attitude through physical fitness. That's very clever, okay? I like it. Um, this is what I wrote. Here we go. Uh, question. Okay. Practice questions also students. So do you think that Victor has always been this positive and optimistic? 
Well, I'm not sure if he has always had this positive outlook on life, but he has certainly been a very cheery person ever since I've known him. I would imagine that he has been this way ever since he has discovered physical fitness. It's a good question. Perhaps I will ask him the next time I see him. Why not, right? It's very genuine. It's very original. So I can ask him the next time I see him. Okay, good. So now the examiner will say, okay, uh, now we'll ask you some more questions connected to the topic of part two. Uh, let's talk about being positive. Usually part three questions are really connected to that part two. Now this is where it becomes extra important uh, to have the right idea for part two. Okay. So remember, uh, especially for those of you who watched the last class, what some of those words were that describe positive, we already used some today. So here is where it becomes very important that you spoke close to the question and on topic for part two. So what I'm talking about here is optimistic, uh, bright side of life, uh, cheery, encouraging, motivational. So all of those words that we covered uh, in last class, because those now become extremely useful for your responses to these part three questions, okay? So at this point, the examiner will say, okay, um, what do people need to be positive? Okay, or what do people need to do, sorry, what do people need to do to be positive? Okay, so what do people need to do uh, to be positive? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this question. All right, Kyber says, well, to be cheerful, I believe that uh, counting um, one's blessings and not comparing oneself with others is very important. Victor and including myself, uh, are grateful for what we have. Um, okay, very good, Kyber. That's a great answer, and I love how you're making the connection. It's very smart. That's the type of response that you want to give for high band scores. Absolutely. Very good. Uh, Ferdov says, in my view, individuals should do yoga, meditation, and aerobic exercises as they assist people to feel better, to be in a positive mood. Also, enough sleep, relaxing, and strengthening family bonds. Very good for Dobbs. It's a nice list of activities to pay attention to for positive uh, attitude. Put a smooth flowing example in there for Dobbs. Make that connection like Kyber and it'll just be that much better. Okay. It's very nice. Arda says, well, it's a tough question because it depends on each person. Eh, I don't know, Arda. Does it? Really? Are you sure about that? I think there are certain activities that are quite common for most people on the planet, and if we do them, we become positive people. I think everybody who participates in regular exercise and meditation and um, self-help books reading will probably experience some level of positive. So careful, Arda. Uh, it sounds like a template that you're using there, which is unnecessary. Okay, It doesn't really depend on each person. kind of does, but not really. Okay, um, so your answer, Arda, really starts with people. Um, people try to remove bad experiences from their minds. Arda, don't use the word things. Okay, I'm not picking at, uh, on you. I just really want you to reach that band nine level. Okay, band nine uh, English speakers do not use the word things or stuff. They speak very professionally. Okay, so people um, should remove bad experiences from their minds. They can be optimistic and have a clear mind without um, ruminating on bad, bad memories. Okay, Arda, so that's one action. You want to say at least one or two more, and you want to speak professionally. Okay. 
Han says, I think that by smiling and practicing to deal with daily problems um, lightly in hopes of a better result, people can gradually become optimistic. Besides uh, meditation um, and reading Biblican, um, these might be other useful methods. Yes, yeah, spiritual books as well, right? That uplift the soul. Kevin says... To remain on the positive side of things, people should exercise regularly as this is empirically proven to increase uh, the secretion of endorphins and serotonin, a type of um, happy uh, neurotransmitter, right, Kevin? It's more serotonin. Uh, endorphins are more for um, pain suppressant, Kevin. Um, serotonin is our happy drug. Okay, uh, as well as uh, positivity can come from simple habits such as counting one's blessings in a day and muting negative inner voices. Yeah, very nice, Kevin. Nice use of uh, vocabulary. Careful with the information, but overall quite good. All right. Couple more. Uh, Irfana says, uh, to be optimistic, one should always be confident in themselves. They should also believe in themselves in fact, one can become positive by regular meditation, exercise, and being in a positive atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Okay, Irfana. Give me an example, Irfana. What do you mean by that, positive atmosphere? So around happy people? Um, all right. Rashika, uh, the activities that help people to stay positive are identified in the negative situations. Um, to give some suitable answers, um, people need to create a positive environment around themselves and do exercise on a daily basis and eat a well-balanced diet since a healthy body leads to a healthy mind and leads to optimistic, confident, positive thinking. Okay, Rashika, good. You're definitely on the right track. You would need to say a little bit more to clarify. Okay, all right, very good. So... Um, in order for uh, people to be optimists, they must emphasize the good experiences in their lives and not ruminate on the negative ones. I mean that when a person uh, loses a football match, they should learn from it and move on. However, when they win a game, they should go out and celebrate. Regular exercise and a healthy diet certainly help to maintain a positive uh, mood. These are uh, the reasons I admire Victor because He is a um, he is an advocate for such ideals. Okay, uh, so here's my answer, kind of drawing on some of your ideas, also putting in some of my own uh, thoughts to give you some new vocabulary as well. So uh, have a look at this. Uh, repeat after me, question and answer. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, Adrian kind of taught a similar part three not that long ago. That's not by accident. Here I want you to do more practice, more fluency. So it's not exactly the same question as what we've had before, but it's similar. And when you have similar questions, it's a great way to really focus on what you have learned, apply it, and then build your fluency. And I can see that some of you are doing that, which is really nice to see. Okay, so here we go. Um, what do people need to do to be positive? In order for people to be optimists, they must emphasize the good experiences in their lives and not ruminate 
on the negative ones. I mean that when a person loses a football match, they should learn from it and move on. However, when they win a game, they should go out and celebrate. Regular exercise and a healthy diet certainly help to maintain positive mood. These are the reasons I admire Victor because he is an advocate for such ideals. Uh, ruminate is the verb that means to spin the idea around and around in your head. Okay, so to think about it over and over again. Never ruminate on negative thoughts. Okay. Uh, Anwar, if you can't see the screen, check your internet settings and change your setting to 720p. Okay. All right. Uh, Isha, the same thing. I can see my screen quite clearly in my feedback loop, so it's probably just for some people's connections. Okay. All right. Um, so then the examiner uh, might ask you a follow up question like, um, okay, which of these is most important? So in this question, the examiner asking which of these steps is most important to focus on the positive, to not uh, ruminate on the negative, to eat healthy, to exercise, which of these is, is the, the key to being healthy, okay? All right, Bakrat, think about how to say that without using the word things, okay? Oh, it says, I think the beneficial way to keep our attitude and mood positive is through exercise, especially walking. When I feel that I'm in a bad mood, I go out for a walk and um, on a trail along a forest or river in my town, and I definitely feel better afterwards. Okay, well, so exercise, just getting some fresh air and some movement. I agree, that is key, okay? Uh, Ferdov says, strengthening family bonds and aerobic exercises are vital as the former one is necessary to be mentally positive and the latter one is important to stay fit as being physically and mentally fit are the foundations for a positive attitude. Good. Gus says, meditation, I would say, is the most significant to be positive. Not only can it refresh the mind to stay uh, in, positive, in a positive mood or, stay, or to have positive vibes. Okay, Gus, that was good. I like the idea of meditation. You shouldn't have retracted. I was just uh, fixing up that one part. Uh, Rafa says there are a lot of characteristics such as honesty, uh, friendliness, talent, but suitable and positive behavior can determine one's character. Rafa, I think you're off topic. Unfortunately, the examiner is asking you about apples and you're talking about oranges. So make sure, Rafa, that you're talking about the same idea. Otherwise, uh, you're going to lose a lot of marks in the speaking section. You have to be on the same page as uh, the examiner, okay? All right, uh, Pavitra says, people or positive thinking can be achieved through a few different techniques uh, that have been proven effective, such as positive self-talk and positive imagery. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Pavitra, which one's the most important, positive Im imagery? Uh, Lei Zhang says the most important is to keep one's mood boosted. But how? What's important to do that? How do I boost my mood? Okay. You have to be clear on that. Okay. So which of these is most important? IELTS is not a test of truth. It's not a test to see if you've read a psychology book on this. You can give any answer. Just make sure to give one clear, accurate answer. So here... The question is, which of these is the most important? Um, I think the most important or the most critical of the points that I had just mentioned is to focus on positive experiences as this will shift the individual's attention away from the negative and will lead to productive and proactive behavior uh, such as joining a sports club which in turn will create a positive uh, feedback 
loop that leads to overall uh, satisfaction and a happy life. Now, some of you are probably realizing, oh, Adrian studied psychology. Indeed, I did. That's my major, psychology, developmental, educational. Um, all right, uh, so uh, here is my response. Repeat after me. So which of these is the most important? I think the most critical of the points that I had just mentioned is to focus on positive experiences as this will shift the individual's attention away from the negative and will lead to productive and proactive behavior, such as joining a sports club, which in turn will create a positive feedback loop that leads to overall satisfaction and a happy life, right? Positive thinking, positive action, you become more positive, you behave in a positive way, you have more positive thinking, and your smiles ear to ear, and you're happy. All right. Okay, thanks, Andre. All right. Um, so, uh, continuing on. Here we go. The examiner will definitely have a few questions. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, what can society do to help citizens be positive? So this is kind of, you know, this mentality in the aisle. So thinking about micro macro, it's a very common type of approach in such exams. So individual society, the person, the school, right? So, um, so think about the micro and the macro, right? Uh, what can society do to help citizens be positive? Okay, I'm sure we have some answers for this one. Oftentimes people are better at uh, giving suggestions to society than the individual. So let's see who studied sociology. It's more in that domain of thought. Okay, Juan says, I think society can regulate the bad news. Um, that's served in the media because this has a greatly uh, negative impact on people's daily life. Since I've stopped following some news channels, uh, I'm way less stressed and I feel better. <laughs> yeah, okay, Juan, especially, I don't mean to laugh, but especially in today's world with uh, the terrible news of COVID constantly, I think it's making people really depressed and the irony by the way, about that, Juan, is when people are sad, they're immune or stressed, their immune systems are weaker. So it's a double-edged sword, right? Negative news creates to leads to a weak immune system, and a weak immune system leads to uh, problems when dealing with a virus, right? So positive news, positive people, strong immune system. You get the idea, right? So double-edged sword indeed. Okay, Kevin says each community can instill optimism in its members by first of all introducing more public spaces like sports facilities where citizens can stay physically active and socialize. Very good, Kevin. Uh, in this case... I don't see the rest of it, Kevin, but... I can definitely see that you're going down the right path. Okay, Oa says, absolutely, I advocate that individuals should be positive even on the more rougher days because this prevents many physical and mental problems um, like high blood pressure and depression. Uh, oh, it's good, but this is about uh, society. So what does society uh, contribute to positive attitude for individuals? Uh, Hatis says people in society can be supported to attend free leisure activities, uh, that can help build positive mood. Hatis, really good start. What can they do? Give me some more, like what kind of free leisure activities, right? Like, um, uh, open theater, for example, um, free, uh, dance lessons in the park. So be visual. Okay. Give some, uh, more details to what you're saying. It's a great start, Hatis. Yerabisha says, um, governments, authorities can hold events that boost people's moods, such as having a routine cycling event uh, where people can interact with each other and 
having sports together is uh, tre tremendously positive. Another one, Yarabisha, immediately that came to my mind is uh, fireworks like the Lunar New Year uh, in uh, Asia. And uh, of course, uh, even though there's lockdown in many parts, they still had lots of fireworks that people could enjoy together from their windows and have a feeling of camaraderie, which has a very encouraging um, effect on the population to uplift the spirits of the public. Okay, very good. Mahmoud says, society can contribute a lot to helping citizens uh, stay positive. They can help each other in general, such as opening new clubs and social venues. Okay, Mahmoud, good. Right, because humans are social creatures and they feel better about themselves and each other when they can connect with others, share their joys and sorrows. Okay, very good. Sandeep Yadav says, certainly I think that society can organize various events such as sports, exercises, teaching yoga in the parks, which will lead to having bonding among uh, neighbors and also having a fit and healthy body and mind. Very good, Sandeep. I threw in a bit more vocabulary so you can just get that higher band score for lexical resource as well, okay? So uh, pay attention to that. Just post one, Sandeep. I'll easily catch it. Barhat says it's uh, quite the social question. Society should um, build awareness about the surroundings. Um, they can help individuals who experience obstacles and obstacles in their life as well uh, by having community support centers. Bakrat, those are called community support, uh, support centers. So, um, yeah, so there are uh, certainly uh, several endeavors uh, which uh, societies uh, can and should embark upon to help their... Um, community uh, members be optimistic uh, and happy. Um, ones that come to mind are uh, social events uh, such as sports and celebrations uh, like local marathons and uh, the 4th of uh, July fireworks. Uh, also, there should be a community outreach programs that aid uh, people when they hit bottom, um, like financial aid and uh, family support uh, services. Okay, uh, so here we go. There's my answer inspired by many of you. So I do have a little bit of an advantage when coming up with the answer. I've read a lot of your responses, right? So um, it's not all me, it's you as well. I'm just feeding off of what you're giving me, okay? Uh, here we go. So from the top, uh, what can society do to help citizens be positive? Uh, there are certainly several endeavors which societies can and should embark upon to help their community members be optimistic and happy. Ones that come to mind are social events such as sports and celebrations like uh, local marathons and the 4th of July fireworks. Also, there should be community outreach programs that aid people when they hit bottom, like financial aid and family support services. Okay, um, so um, how does this benefit society? Uh, let me complete this question. When uh, the citizens are uh, optimistic. Okay. So give me a nice answer for this question. How does this benefit society when citizens are optimistic? It's a very important question. I, I think that some people have probably played that game, Civilizations. There's so many versions of it now. It's one of the most uh, 
popular computer games in the last 20, 30 years. And uh, one of the goals of that game is to make sure that you have a happy society. And if you play that game, then you know why it's so important to have a happy society in the game civilizations. Uh, so I wonder if anybody is going to think about this answer from that perspective. Okay. Un says, I believe that society can develop dramatically as the economy can flourish with employees becoming more productive, energetic in their work, and students can learn more effectively when they are optimistic. Absolutely, Un. That is the key, right? When you have a happy society, you have a productive society. Again, it's that positive loop, right, that you want to get people into. So when you have a happy society, that's why it's so amazing for me that some societies don't see this or have such difficulty figuring this out, that if the people are happy, everybody's happy. Okay, um, Ferdov says, society can benefit from those activities as people are always positive. They uh, tend to be less stressed, which decreases many stress-related problems um, from less strain on medical systems and allocating more uh, funds to other sectors like social welfare. Yeah, absolutely for dogs, right? Less illness in the community. As I just said, uh, better immune system. So I know we're living in difficult times with this pandemic. It's putting a lot of stress and strain, but this is why I'm always encouraging everyone to just stay positive because it's through the difficult times that we want to stay even more positive. Very good. Kevin Bui says, Having uh, an optimistic public sentiment can contribute to a uh, stronger working morale, which improves both output and prosperity. Also, with less people suffering from mental strain, uh, the burden on healthcare staff and expenses would be significantly alleviated. This can be seen during the uh, 20th century when the population in many first world nations was high in spirit and their economy boomed, especially during the 80s, 90s. Yeah, late 80s and 90s. Yeah, Kevin, very nice answer. Yeah, 70s as well, I guess, Kevin. Uh, very good, very good example. Yeah, very nice. Okay, uh, Zokir says, there are lots of benefits where the whole society um, is positive, not only preventing bad situations like uh, increasing crime rates, uh, such as theft and murder, but also improvements in social connections and increased productivity. Okay, very good, Zokir. Couple of slight adjustments, so it reads a little bit better, but overall quite good. So um, <clears throat> there are incredible advantages to having high morale in society. Firstly, this leads to increased uh, productivity and rapid development of infrastructure and education. Not only uh, does society prosper, but it also lays the foundation for a better future with cutting edge uh, technology and sustainability. This can be seen uh, during the rise of past empires such as Rome and the United States. Yeah, absolutely, right? Uh, so usually great empires in our history, such as Rome, the Republic of Rome, and the early days of the United States as well, the American dream, right? You might even throw that in there, such as the United States uh, as uh, is echoed 
by the quote unquote American dream, right? All right, um, there, I'll even throw that in there. That's kind of an expression that we use sometimes, quote unquote, the American dream. Okay, uh, so here we go. Uh, how does this benefit society when the citizens are optimistic? There are incredible advantages to having high morale in society. Firstly, this leads to increased productivity and rapid development of infrastructure and education. Not only does society prosper, but it also lays the foundations for a better future with cutting edge technology and sustainability. This can be seen during the rise of past empires such as Rome and the United States, as is echoed by the uh, quote unquote American dream of, I would say, of the second half of the 20th century. Well, maybe even the whole 20th century, but getting into details there doesn't really matter for IELTS. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, next question. Here we go. Let's do this together. So, uh, some people say that it is most important to stay positive during difficult and challenging times. Why is this? So some people say that it is most important to stay positive during difficult and challenging times. Uh, why is this? All right, Kevin, putting a smile on my face. Okay, uh, Ferdov says, I totally agree that being in a positive mood during bad circumstances is vital. As staying positive, people are able to manage terrible situations, avoiding harmful effects to health and society. For Dobbs, a little bit more explanation. Why? What happens? Okay. What does, think about it this way. What does staying positive help us to do in a difficult situation? Okay. Uh, Medina, staying calm in a difficult situation is the key because we should focus on the solution, not the problem. Medina, really good idea. Keep the controlling idea the same. So instead of staying calm, uh, staying positive. So staying positive in a difficult situation is key because it lets the person focus on the optimal solution and not the problem. Then it's really good, Medina. Then you're definitely on the right track. Okay. All right. Kyber says the reason why individuals uh, state that one should be optimistic in tough circumstances is that it is beneficial for mental health as it avoids overthinking a specific topic. Kevin says to state that adopting a positive mindset during taxing times is the foremost measure um, can be explained by the fact that it keeps people resilient, which is the decisive factor to uh, overcoming any hindrance. Otherwise, individuals might descend into negative thoughts and resort to extreme acts that could hurt um, hurt themselves, such as suicide. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, negative thinking at its worst. Okay, Rafia uh, says, because uh, all people don't think and apply the same every time uh, for whole rules. I mean, COVID process is difficult because it's been a long time and people want to go outside and live their life by chill. Uh, Rafia, I'm not sure where you're going with it. Honestly, I get that you're frustrated, but um, you need to answer the question. Cab thug says, because only challenges may make people happy and, or ruin it all, like losing a game and getting depressed and because of depression, getting a divorce and breaking up bonds. Uh, C-A-B thug. I'm not sure again where you're going with it. Okay. It looks like you're kind of going off the question. Okay. Mahmoud says it's important to sustain, maintain a positive attitude in challenging parts of life because if a person is disappointed in the crisis, it will lead to losing competence and a lack of success. Mahmoud, you've got the right idea, but you have to be a little bit more careful in the way you express it. Okay, so by maintaining... a good attitude. 
uh, even in problematic situations, a person is able to focus their attention on solutions rather than problems. And by doing so, they increase their chance of finding the best uh, resolve and coming out on top. My uh, coach, Victor, has proven uh, this theory by staying positive during a uh, losing football match and uh, thinking of a winning strategy for the uh, second half and leading our team to uh, victory. Yeah, why not? Let's connect back to our gym uh, teacher and football coach, Victor, from our part two response, right? Always remember that, okay? So here we go. Here's the question. Some people say that it is most important to stay positive during difficult and challenging times. Why is this? Um, and then uh, here comes our answer. So let me just uh, get the rest of this part back here. Um, by maintaining a good attitude, even in problematic situations, a person is able to focus their attention on solutions rather than problems. And by doing so, they increase their chance of finding the best resolve and coming out on top. My coach Victor has proven this theory by staying positive during a losing football match and thinking of a winning strategy for the second half and leading our team to victory. Stay positive, right? It's a point and case. All right, and now that you're doing a good job and you're staying positive in your IELTS speaking exam, you're being fluent, you're getting that band nine score, the examiner asks you a few more questions about attitude and success. You can practice those questions on your own students. Uh, that's it for me for today. I will be back on Wednesday with another week of live classes and I will post this live class schedule on our YouTube community board and in our Instagram so you can check it out there. Um, of course, uh, I highly recommend visiting our websites, joining our premium package, spend a couple dollars, save yourself a lot of headache and time to get the best score on the outs that you can aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. In a world that's quite depressing sometimes these days with these lockdowns and uh, all kinds of restrictions, it's a little bit easier to get down on one's self and, or to be in a bad mood, but uh, it's not the right approach. So uh, say no to that, stay positive, stay happy, uh, give positive vibes to society and the people around you and life will reward you, I promise you. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest for now. Hopefully, I will see you in a few days. Much love to all of you. Bye.